from the Tribune News Network, this is News Break. I'm Krishna Russell. The Office of the Attorney General filed documents asking the Court of Appeal to stay Supreme Court Justice Ian Winder's consequential ruling on citizenship rights and to grant leave for the rulings to be appealed to the Privy Council. Kingsley Smith, a lawyer at the Office of the Attorney General, filed an affidavit in support of the application for leave. This comes after the Court of Appeal in a 3-2 to two decision last week affirmed Justice Winder's ruling that children born in the Bahamas out of wedlock to Bahamian men are citizens at birth, regardless of the nationality of their mother. It is thought that if the ruling stands, it will have major implications for access to citizenship in the Bahamas and could affect the status of thousands of people. Bahamas Power and Light employees demonstrated outside the company's headquarters yesterday with the union representing line staff at the utility provider saying it is giving management 14 days to resolve all outstanding matters or face its wrath. Yesterday at 9 a.m., dozens of BPL staff walked off of the job in a show of solidarity against executive management. According to Bahamas Electrical Workers Union President Kyle Wilson, management has disrespected and mistreated staff. He also claimed management has violated the industrial agreement between the company and the union. Meanwhile, in response, the power provider issued a statement calling the walkout illegal and the claims unfounded. BPL said in part, quote, Bahamas Power and Light values and appreciates its line staff, many of whom have gone and continue to go above and beyond the call of duty to ensure that our customers are serviced even in these trying and sometimes frightening times. BPL further denied having disregarded the industrial agreement, which the union believes to to be properly valid. The statement said the industrial agreement provides a mechanism for the settlement of disputes or breaches of the agreement, which include notification of one party to the other prior to involvement of a third party. A $200 million investment is required for the comprehensive redevelopment of a Grand Bahama International Airport that lost more than $13 million in the two and a half years before the government acquired it. The extent of the potential liabilities facing Bahamian taxpayers as a result of that purchase, which closed as recently as June 1, was fully exposed during yesterday's briefing for private sector groups interested in bidding on public-private partnerships to redevelop, finance, and manage Grand Bahama's major aviation Gateway and six other family island airports. Data disclosed during briefing reveals the Grand Bahama International Airport generated an operating profit in just one of the five years prior to the sale to government, providing further insight into why its former owners, Hutchinson Wampoa and the Grand Bahama Port Authority's Port Group Limited, were both so reluctant to rebuild it post Dorian and so eager to offload a regular loss maker to the taxpayer. Atlantis will operate at close to 90 percent occupancy over the next few weeks, its top executive revealed yesterday, with all properties apart from the beach towers having reopened post-COVID. Audrey Oswell, Atlantis's president and managing director, told the Tribune that the Paradise Island Mega Resort is currently operating at 75 percent plus occupancies. She added, quote, all of the resort, with the exception of beach, is now open and we expect to run close to 90 percent occupancy over the next few weeks. Comparing this July to 2019's record-setting year, Ms. Oswell said Atlantis is pleased to report that the hotel is approaching 2019 occupancy levels. The booking window is much shorter, she said, and airlift continues to be a challenge, but booking pace has increased steadily over the past few months. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, search and rescue teams from Miami-Dade are considered amongst the best and most experienced in the world. Dispatched to epic disaster scenes far beyond their Florida base, from the rubble of the World Trade Center to earthquake-ravaged Haiti, Mexico, and the Philippines. This time, disaster struck at home. The rescuers are searching urgently for the scores of souls buried beneath a fallen 12-story wing of the Champlain Towers condo building. As of Tuesday morning, more than five days after the collapse. The death toll stood at 11, with 150 people unaccounted for. UK Health Secretary Matt Hancock has resigned after breaking social distancing rules with an aide he was allegedly having an affair with. The tabloid Sun newspaper had run images appearing to show the married Hancock and senior aide, Gina Cola D'Angelo, kissing in an office at the Department of Health. Hancock said in his letter of resignation to Prime Minister Boris Johnson that the government owes it to the people who have sacrificed so much in this pandemic, to be honest, when we have let them down. Johnson had been facing widespread calls to fire Hancock, who had apologized for breaching social distancing rules. 
The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. Rich tropical moisture coupled with lingering troughing across the area will continue to trigger bouts of unsettled weather over the Bahamas. Meanwhile, building high pressure will maintain moderate to fresh breezes across the island chain through tonight. Boaters should remain vigilant due to the threat of possible water spot activity, along with gusty winds, high seas, and reduced visibility in heavy showers and thunderstorms. Beach goers in the central and southeast Bahamas should exercise caution due to the risk of rip currents along eastern and southern shorelines. For all areas, it'll be variably cloudy, warm, and breezy, with scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms through tonight. A small craft caution is in effect for the central and southeast Bahamas. Expect gusty winds in or near heavy showers and thunderstorms. Winds east to southeast at 10 to 15 knots, but gusty at times today, increasing to 15 knots tonight in the northwest Bahamas. Easterly at 15 to 20 knots in the central and to southeast Bahamas. Seas two to four feet over the ocean, but occasionally higher in gusts today, building three to five feet tonight in the northwest Bahamas, four to six feet in the central and southeast Bahamas. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 90 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 74. The sun will set this afternoon at 8.02 p.m. and will rise tomorrow morning at 6.23. That's Newsbreak. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper, now on the streets, or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.